Welcome back to the movie recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2004 American psychological thriller film called, Secret Window. Spoilers ahead. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The movie begins with Mort Rainey, composing himself as he sits inside his car. While sitting, Mort's inner self eventually talks inside his head, saying that Mort should turn the car around and get out of the area. Due to that, Mort wears his glasses and shifts gears as he moves the car away from the motel. Mort, who's grunting while leaving the motel, suddenly breaks his car and decides to go back despite the persuasion of his inner self not to go back. Afterward, Mort quickly gets out of his vehicle and aggressively trespasses the motel office to get a key. Unfortunately, it turns out that Mort finds out that his wife, Amy Rainey, is having an affair with her friend, Ted. And the key he stole from the motel office is Amy and Ted's room key. Mort then parks his car outside the motel and immediately walks toward the motel room to open its door. Once inside, Amy and Ted eventually wake up as Mort trespasses and screams right in front of Amy's face. Six months later, Mort, a depressed mystery writer suffering from writer's block, reveals that he retreats to his cabin at Tashmore Lake in upstate New York after the incident of catching his wife cheating. Inside the cabin, Mort is heavily sleeping on his couch when suddenly he hears a loud knock at his door and the rattling of the doorknob. Due to that, Mort sluggishly gets up to open the door, only to find out that a man named John Shooter, has suddenly arrived at his cabin, and accuses Mort of plagiarizing his story. Shooter speaks with a southern accent, but Mort seems unaware of his identity and the accusation he's talking about. Due to that, Shooter clarifies that it doesn't matter to him because what only matter is that he knows Mort. Confused, Mort defends himself and says that Shooter is only mistaken because he doesn't read manuscripts. So, Shooter, on the other hand, quickly shows a pile of manuscript papers in front of Mort's face, and threatens him not to call the police about their matter. Pissed off, Mort makes clear that he doesn't want to get accused of something he didn't do, especially plagiarism. Still, Shooter is eager to emphasize that Mort stole his story. So, Mort tries to close the door to end their discussion when suddenly Shooter gives his manuscripts to him, and threatens Mort not to play games with him. However, Mort still refuses to get Shooter's manuscripts, and points out their matter is already settled as he closes the door. Afterward, Mort hears Shooter's thumps outside, indicating that he's leaving the cabin. As soon as Shooter leaves, Mort opens the door again, only to discover that Shooter intentionally left his manuscripts on the floor. Eventually, Mort picks up the manuscripts and reads the title of Shooter's short story, Sewing Season. However, Mort only throws it in the trash bin right after going back inside his cabin. A while later, Mort returns to his office table in an attempt to continue writing his story. Yet, it shows that he still has writer's block. Frustrated about his lousy writing, Mort decides to erase the starting paragraph of his short story on his laptop. Afterward, Mort goes to the kitchenette to get a can to drink from the fridge when he suddenly sees Shooter's manuscripts lying on the table. Luckily, Mrs. Garvey, Mort's housekeeper, eventually appears and says that she's the one who found it in the trash, assuming that it is from Mort's. Leaving him no choice, Mort decides to read Shooter's manuscripts. Then upon reading the first page, he suddenly discovers that it is virtually identical to his own story, Secret Window, causing him to drop the papers on the table, and tell Mrs. Garvey that he didn't write it. However, Mrs. Garvey refuses to believe Mort, and only pretends to agree that it's not his story. Afterward, Mort quickly gets his book from the shelf and ensures that his work is identical to Shooter's short story. However, the only difference between their stories is the ending. Mort then suddenly reminisces about basing his story ending on Amy discovering a secret window inside the cabin. The following day, Mort suddenly wakes up by the phone ring, to which he finds out it's Amy calling to ask about his situation. Trying to compose himself, Mort calmly listens to Amy when suddenly he decides to open up about his secret window story. Amy reveals that it's her least favorite work of Mort, but she still listens to him. So, Mort attempts to give Amy a clue that someone might get influenced by his story, and decides to copy it, but unfortunately, Amy disagrees with him. Instead of continuing to talk about it, Mort changes the topic and asks about her situation with Ted. After their talk, Mort decides to go outside and take a walk in Lake Drive when he suddenly sees Shooter again, leaning at the back of his car. So, Mort, who once plagiarized another author's story, informs Shooter that two writers show up with the same narrative, but the thing is that which of them both wrote the words first. So, Mort eventually asks Shooter when did he write his story, but Shooter answers inaccurately. While talking, Mort eventually sees Greenleaf's car on the road, and waves his hand at him while passing by. Afterward, Mort continues to talk, telling Shooter that his story was published in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine two years before Shooter's date of publication. 
So, Mort attempts to invalidate Shooter's plagiarism claim. However, Shooter is unsatisfied with Mort's basis and pushes him against the car as he demands actual proof. Due to that, Shooter gives Mort three days to call Amy to send the magazine with his story in it since it is located at their marital home in Riverdale, New York. Later at night, Mort eventually wakes up due to a hypnic jerk during his hypnagogic state of sleep. Afterward, he gets a glass of water when suddenly he sees a paper pasted outside his glass window. Due to that, Mort decides to check outside, only to find a note from Shooter about their deal and Chico, who's found dead outside the cabin. Frustrated, Mort secures his cabin by closing every window to protect himself from Shooter, whom he suspects is Chico's killer. Afterward, Mort buries Chico's corpse near his place. The following day, Mort goes to the police station to talk with Sheriff Newsom and report the incident that happened last night. Mort then shows the note Shooter left outside his cabin, but Sheriff thinks that Mort is only making a story. Due to that, Mort decides to hire a private investigator Ken Karsh and talk about Shooter, who copied his story. However, Ken refuses to believe him at first because he doesn't know what kind of situation is Mort into. So, Mort clarifies that it's only a man he wants to get out of his mind. Fortunately, Ken agrees to help Mort and listens to his story, to which he finds out that Mort is planning to go to his and Amy's marital house to retrieve a copy of the magazine, and show it to Shooter. Due to that, Ken instructs Mort that he'll be patrolling outside his home using his black Cadillac car once he gets the magazine. However, Mort fails to get the magazine as he sees Ted and Amy outside their marital house upon his arrival. Later at night, Mort discovers Ken's car outside his cabin and receives information from Ken that he's only waiting for him to come home after checking the place. But Mort is unsatisfied and demands Ken to look inside, too. However, Ken finds nothing, so he tells Mort that he'll be back in the morning, and start asking around town. Due to that, Mort eventually remembers Greenleaf, a resident and the person who passed by when he was talking to Shooter on Lake Drive. Mort then presumes that Greenleaf might get a good look at Shooter, so Ken asks about Greenleaf's whereabouts. Mort then says that he'll see Greenleaf at Bowie's store, taking his breakfast at 9 a.m. After Ken leaves the cabin, Mort eventually hears something inside his house. Due to that, Mort immediately picks up a long metal stick for protection, and looks at who might be the trespasser that attempts to invade his home. Eventually, Mort hears a rattling sound inside his bathroom, so he quickly grabs the opportunity to attack and beats the bathroom mirror. Then he hears a mouse squeak, to which he aggressively hits his shower door and finds the mouse. Afterward, he safely covers the mouse using a bath towel and frees itself outside his cabin. However, Shooter appears once again while Mort is freeing the mouse. Technically, it turns out that Shooter learns that Mort fails to get the magazine as proof after he attempts to go to his and Amy's marital house. So, Mort asks what he can do to make Shooter feel better. Due to that, Shooter replies and makes another deal once more, where he demands that Mort should revise his story's ending to Shooter's version, in which the protagonist kills his wife. After that, Mort will publish it and put Shooter's name as the story's author as he believes his ending is better than Mort's. The following day, Mort receives a phone call from Amy, informing him that an arson fire had destroyed their marital house. Technically, the magazine is included in the burning. Due to that, Mort eventually finds himself arriving at their marital house, which is now gone. Afterward, a police officer named, Wickersham, reports that the arson was started by an incendiary device made with a champagne bottle and a couple of quarts of plain old gasoline. Technically, the police presume that the suspect might be their enemy because it was an intention to create an arson fire. Due to that, Mort reveals to the police officer that he has an enemy. Later at night, Mort returns to his cabin and quickly opens the door after hearing the phone call ringing inside. Then, it turns out it is Ken calling, informing Mort that his agent might have a copy of his magazine and already sent the original through UPS. Afterward, Ken also tells that he caught up with Greenleaf, in which he learns that Greenleaf claimed that he never saw Mort and Shooter talking together. However, Ken reveals that Greenleaf was nervous while talking to him, allowing Ken to suspect Shooter that he has threatened Greenleaf. Due to that, Mort eventually gets convinced by Ken's opinion and plans to see Ken at Bowie's diner the following day and meet up with Greenleaf first. Technically, they are planning to confront Shooter after Greenleaf and ask if someone is hiring him to threaten Mort. The following day, Mort wakes up late after struggling to sleep last night. While preparing to leave, Mort notices that his car door is wide open, and discovers a cigarette inside, which he only neglects and starts driving the engine. Arriving late, Mort immediately asks the cashier if Ken or Greenleaf showed up at the diner, only to find out that neither of them came. Due to that, Mort decides to return to his cabin when suddenly he encounters Ted at a gas station filling gas to his car. Mort then immediately parks his car and approaches Ted, 
To which Ted suddenly demands Mort sign the divorce papers that he's holding. Believing Shooter is in Ted's employ, Mort eventually rages as he refuses. Mort then taunts Ted by pushing him so hard, and leaves him behind. Later, Shooter summons Mort to a meeting place by calling him through the phone. Once Mort arrives, he suddenly finds Ken and Greenleaf dead inside Greenleaf's truck. Mort cannot believe what happened to the two, resulting in him passing out at sight after vomiting. Hours later, Mort finally wakes up and finds Mort behind his back. Unfortunately, Mort finds out that Shooter killed the two men for interfering in his business. So, Mort immediately stands up to go to the police station when suddenly Shooter informs him that he used Mort's axe and screwdriver as the murder weapons. Technically, Shooter has deliberately implicated Mort in the two men's murder so that he cannot report it to the police. Frustrated, Mort finally reveals that he has the magazine, and agrees to meet Shooter at his cabin to show the proof. But before that, Shooter commands Mort to dispose of the bodies before returning home. Panicking, Mort immediately returns to Greenleaf's truck and retrieves his tools. Afterward, he pushes the car while Ken and Greenleaf's bodies are still inside. Mort then watches the vehicle plunging off a cliff into a water-filled quarry, where it slowly sinks afterward. Mort then returns home and answers Amy's phone call. Mort then learns that Amy's convincing him to sign the paper to finalize their divorce, but Mort has no time to argue with Amy about it and aggressively drops the call. Due to that, Amy decides to visit Mort in his cabin, and personally convince him to sign the paper. Afterward, Mort drives to the UPS post office to retrieve the package containing the magazine, which supposedly arrived the day after sending it overnight by his literary agent. Then as soon as he recovers it, he returns to the car and attempts to open it when suddenly he sees a police officer walking toward him. Due to that, Mort starts driving the engine and informs the police officer that he will call him instead. Once alone, Mort quickly opens the envelope, only to discover that it has already been opened, and the pages in the magazine containing his story have been ripped out. Mort then suspects that it was Shooter who did it. At Mort's cabin, Mort eventually discovers Shooter's hat on the table. Due to that, he decides to put it on and begins speaking to himself. Technically, it turns out that Mort is trying to make sense of the events as his inner self convinces him that he's the suspect in the killings and there is no John Shooter. Frustrated and in denial, Mort suddenly throws an object at the wall when suddenly the wall grows a crack and fractures the cabin in half. Surprised, Mort watches it until he finds himself standing in front of the mirror. But instead of seeing his front body, he eventually gets startled after seeing the back of his head reflect on it. Mort then realizes that Shooter is only an illusion of his imagination, a formed character that has accidentally been brought to life because of Mort's undetected dissociative identity disorder. Technically, it turns out that Shooter is a persona that fully controls Mort to carry out wicked tasks that Mort himself cannot do, such as killing and forming arson. Later, Amy arrives at the cabin and discovers that it gets ransacked. Amy then tries finding Mort, only to see the word, Shooter, carved in different angles on the walls and furniture. Fortunately, Amy finally finds Mort, who appears at the back of the door. However, she suddenly notices Mort being indifferent. Technically, it turns out that Mort is acting as Shooter, and Amy soon realizes that the carved on the wall behind Mort indicates that Shooter means, shoot her. Due to that, Mort quickly chases Amy and stabs her in the ankle. Mort almost kills Amy when suddenly he hears Ted's voice, looking for Amy inside the cabin. As wicked as he is, Mort decides to ambush Ted. Once Amy shouts, Ted immediately goes to her location, allowing Mort to smash his face with a shovel right after opening the back door. Due to that, Amy has left no choice, but to watch Mort mercilessly beat Ted with a shovel while reciting the ending of Shooter's story, The Sewing Season. The movie ends a month later, wherein Mort has finally recovered from his writer's block and is feeling better, especially in his mood. However, people in the town fear seeing Mort due to the rumors spreading about the missing people associated with him. Due to that, Sheriff Newsom decides to visit Mort in his cabin to tell him that he suspects him as the prime suspect of the murders. He even assures Mort that they will eventually find the bodies, and Mort must leave the town before it happens. However, Mort ignores the threat.